2017 will be remembered as one of the best years for games, but we also had great tech and hardware launches. New consoles changed the way we play, and a resurgence of competition in the PC hardware market gave us more performance for our dollar. So, let's look back at the 9 biggest hardware launches of the year. Nintendo tried something risky with its console handheld hybrid, and boy did it pay off. The Switch can be played like a traditional console on a TV when it's docked, but taking top-notch games on the go is really something special. By nature of the tablet design, it doesn't pack the most powerful specs. But the quality of games like Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey proves that you don't need the best graphics to make the best games. There's something truly amazing about being able to play these games on the big screen in the living room, and then picking up where you left off later on the bus. Now if you want the most power out of a gaming console, Microsoft's Xbox One X largely lived up to the hype. At $500 it's relatively expensive in the console space, but it can give a significantly more expensive PC a run for its money in terms of performance. That 6 teraflop number thrown around translates into much higher resolutions and more detail in games that are enhanced for the Xbox One X. Gears of War 4 and Halo 5 look better than ever running at 4K, and multi-platform games like Assassin's Creed Origins and Middle-Earth Shadow of War look best on the One X. Nvidia's GTX 1080 was the fastest graphics card we had ever tested when it debuted in 2016, but it was overtaken by the GTX 1080 Ti this year. It's still based on the same Pascal architecture of the other GTX 10 series cards, but it features more CUDA cores, texture units, and video RAM. All these enhancements make it the fastest consumer-level graphics card and the best option for maxing out PC games at 4K. The wait for Vega meme is dead. AMD inserted itself back into the conversation when it comes to high-end video cards with the RX Vega 64, finally an answer to NVIDIA's GTX 1080. According to our tests, Vega 64 runs slightly better at 4K than the GTX 1080, and it did so for $50 less when it launched at $500. AMD's more affordable RX Vega 56 was a response to the GTX 1070. In terms of specs, Vega 56 is a toned-down version of the Vega 64. Both cards use the same architecture, but the 56 featured less stream processors, texture units, and a slightly lower clock speed across the board. The card's great for 1440p resolutions and bested NVIDIA's GTX 1070 in many of our tests. AMD made a comeback in the CPU space as well when it released the Ryzen series. Ryzen 7 topped the consumer-level options with the 1800X, 1700X, and 1700 models, all of which are 8-core 16-thread CPUs using the new Zen architecture. The mid-range Ryzen 5 family of CPUs soon followed with the 1600X and 1600 that packed 6 cores and 12 threads. The 1500X and 1400 models offered 4 cores and 8 threads. At the entry level, Ryzen 3 CPUs gave you quad-core processors for cheap. AMD was able to pair multi-core performance previously reserved for workstation CPUs and unprecedented value. Intel also came out strong this year with their own family of new CPUs. The 8th generation of core CPUs released in October with the i7-8700K leading the charge. For the first time in the Intel Core lineup, the flagship consumer level model increased its core count, going from 4 to 6. Intel gave a boost to the mid-range Core i5 lineup as well, going from the traditional 4-core setup to a 6-core setup, but without multi-threading. Regardless, the i5-8600K and i5-8400 offered high-end performance at an affordable price. With the Core i3 family, gone are the days of settling for a dual-core processor when you're on a budget, now that these come with 4 cores. Nintendo did nostalgia right with the SNES Classic this year, a follow-up to the NES Classic that came before it. This cute rendition of the original SNES packed 21 great games from the console's time in the early to mid-90s. Super Mario RPG, Super Metroid, Super Mario World, and Earthbound can be played on modern TVs with ease. Star Fox 2 even got an official release through the SNES Classic. If you're using one of the older DS models or you're interested in jumping in the expansive library of 3DS games, we highly recommend the new 2DS XL that came out this year. It ditches the 3D capabilities and adopts the clamshell design. It's got a sleek, minimalist look and packs the enhanced hardware of the new 3DS models. It's Nintendo's best DS system yet, and despite the platform's age, there's still a lot to enjoy here. For several years, 4K TVs have been quite expensive, but TCL's 55P607 proved that you can get an excellent yet affordable 4K TV. In addition to giving you ultra-high definition, the TV does HDR, which makes colors more vibrant and lighting more realistic. To top it off, it's a smart TV that comes with Roku support built right in and only costs around 600 bucks. 
Those were the biggest hardware releases we saw in 2017. Now, if we missed anything, let us know in the comments. And be sure to check out all our videos and articles that look back at the world of games in 2017. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.